Hello everyone, it's Phil here with another video. In this video, we will have a look at a SATA to RDE adapter. I got three of these from eBay because they are different to my existing ones. While I don't remember exactly how much they cost, it wasn't much, certainly not more than a few dollars per adapter. So let's take a closer look. There are many that look similar, so it's important to look for little features that differentiate them. The large connector is where you connect the RDE ribbon cable which then goes into the motherboard's RDE port. One thing I really like about this adapter is that they come with the large Molex power connectors. I have other SATA to RDE adapters, but they use uh, floppy connectors and I always need to use splitter cables because power supplies usually only come with just a single floppy power cable. There are two capacitors on one side and on the other side is a jumper to set master or slave. Not all of the adapters I found have this feature. I tested this function with two storage devices and it worked without any problems. So if you're planning on using two devices on one ID channel, this adapter might be for you. The only other identification is some sort of model number, JP-103-5, that is printed onto the board. Very important is the converter chip. This is really the guts of an uh, IDE to SATA adapter. It has IDE slash SATA DOF B74K Z0441 written on it. The B could be an 8, but it's quite difficult to tell. A Google search did not bring up any information, so if you happen to know more such as make and model, please do let me know. Let's have a look at the other side of this adapter. Here we find the SATA data and power connectors. This adapter plugs straight into the back of a SATA hard drive or optical drive. One flaw I notice are the full solder points for the Molex power connector. They can easily be pushed against the drive and can cause a short. So what I did is just isolate the area with some tape. Connecting the adapter to hard drive is very easy. Just line it up with the drive and push it in. The position of the SATA data and power connectors are standardized, so you shouldn't have any problems. Two and a half inch portable drives are also supported. Very handy if you've got some notebook drives lying around. This adapter supports hard drives, but also optical drives. I tried a modern LG Blu-ray drive and it worked without any problems. In fact, I used the hard drive and optical drive shown in this video with my Socket 370 reference platform. If you want to know more, check out my website at www.philscomputerlab.com. The adapters also have a red LED at the back. I find this quite useful as I often build projects outside a case and don't connect any front header LEDs. Okay, time to do some benchmarking and find out how these adapters perform. I use my 3.2 GHz Socket 478 reference platform, which is based on an ASRock P4i65G motherboard. This motherboard has an Intel 865 chipset. The ICH5 South Bridge provides two UDMA 100 IDE channels, as well as two SATA 1.5 ports. I will use them both, benchmarking a 2TB Samsung SATA hard drive connected directly to the SATA 1.5 port and then again through the adapter but this time connected to the IDE port. So let's have a look at the results. Here we're looking at the benchmark results with ATTO disk benchmark. On the left side we have the results when the hard drive was connected directly to the SATA port. On the right side we have the results of the hard drive connected through the adapter and into the IDE port. The hard drive clearly performs better when connected directly to SATA. However, the performance of the adapter is still very good even when connected to the IDE port. And this brings us to the end of this re review. What do I think? Personally, I really like this adapter. It performs extremely well. It is compatible with hard drives as well as optical drives. The master slave function allows the use of two drives on a single IDE channel and works as expected. I really like that it uses standard Molex power connectors and the built-in LED is a nice bonus. One advice if you're using this adapter on older machines with Windows 98 for example, make sure that you enable DMA in Device Manager. Without DMA 
performance is quite poor. But this applies to hard drives in general. This is not something specific to this adapter. Thank you for watching and if you have any comments or suggestions, you can contact me through YouTube, but also via email, Facebook and Twitter. If you like, check out my website, philscomputerlab.com. I've only started building it and there's lots of work to be done, but you might find some information and resources already quite useful.